Hey y'all, welcome back to Hopped Up Beer Review. Today we are drinking Rodenbach Alexander out of the Rodenbach Brewery from Roselaire, Belgium. Thanks for joining us. Hey everybody, welcome to Hopped Up Beer Review, the show where we give your own professional somewhat biased opinion about the beer we are drinking and reviewing. Be sure to like, subscribe, cheers, that notification bell. We would definitely appreciate that. We are back to review yet another beer in our search to review every beer in the world that has ever been. I've got Andy in the attic. I've got Jay. I am Ben. What are we drinking and reviewing today, gentlemen? Written back Alexander. Mm -hmm. Rodenbach, Belgium. All right. This one's pretty nice little purple-ish <clears throat> oil here, right? Like that. Yeah, it had more nice time on the bar on the top. Yeah. yeah. I would have definitely appreciated that, Andy. A bow would have just really completed the package. Mm. But alas, no bow. I'll still drink it. This is an intriguing one. This is a Flanders Red Ale, also known as Flemish Red Brown Ale or Red Brown Beer. Mm -hmm. Woof. Is that like Belgian for superb? Is that what you're... Ooh, it's like I can smell the barrel. The, <clears> barrel the macinated that. cherries. Yeah, macerated. Macerated sugars. Yeah. Macerated. Cheers, mates. Cheers, Cheers mates. Some cherry in your life. Indeed. Oh, uh, yes. That will make you pucker. Like, did I just eat a cherry Jolly Rancher or did I take a sip of beer? Man. All right. This is 5.6% non IBUs. Um, it's interesting. They've got different styles of this Flanders Red Ale, they're classic. This is the Alexander, uh, their uh, Rodenbach Classic is their original, and it's three quarters young beer and one quarter two year matured beer. So the Classic is what they first started out with uh, when the brewery was founded. Now the they have another, um, Rodenbach that uses or that they call the uh, Rodenbach Grand Cru. So the Alexander is two thirds aged Grand Cru. So they take the Grand Cru final product, age it. Two, they two thirds of this beer is aged that the Grand Cru, which has a two year uh, matured from oak cast called Foders. F O E D E R. Yes, that's on the label right there. Um, so we call them an oak cast. They call them foders. So they take two thirds of the Grand Cru and one third of Young Ale. So that hasn't been aged; that just the freshly brewed. And um, then it's macerated with sour cherries, like smashed in. And, and sour cherries is true. Technically, this is a macro too, isn't it? Technically, it is a macro. You're you're getting yeah. ahead of us, Jay. Oh, I'm sorry. And in looking up for the the logo that I have down there, or the image for the beer, um, I saw pictures of these photos, which I will display here magically. Um, and I mean, these things are massive. I mean, I think of oat barrels, and I think of something that's you know about waist height or so. Just because that's what I've You're seen. You're thinking of whiskey barrels or something like yeah, that. Yeah, exactly. Uh, but I mean, these things are like 
three times the size of a person. They're huge. Got to think um, big, Ben. Got to think big. And I guess if you got a macro beer you're producing, you're gonna have to. Those, those little tiny, those little whiskey barrels just won't do. Just, just won't do. Like yeah. So when it says it's aged in oak barrels, well, when we think aged beer, and we think taking a bourbon barrels and aging beer. No, this is you know, and it's only five point six percent, so it's not like it's been in any um, type of whiskey. How long do they age it? Did you say two years? Two years for part of it, right? Yeah. Well, so the aged beers are aged for two years. That was the Grand Cru. Um, well, yeah, yeah. They this is the base for all the Roden back. So the Grand Cru, the classic, the Grand Cru, this Alexander. I think there's another one. Um, and so it's comes down to how the how much the um the aged versus the new the young yeah. ale the young beer that they put in so the classic is three quarters young beer one quarter two year matured um and they just and blend then, them yeah and then this one is the one that adds cherry to it it takes right. the grand crew um <clears throat> And takes two thirds of their grand crew, one third young cherries. I thought you said three quarters. That was the classic. Okay, the grand crew on, is. There's going to be a test on this. Yeah, <sighs> flash some notes up on the screen or something. It's just too so, much production value. The brewery, Rod, brewery Rodenbach, Rodenbach Brewery, was founded in 1821. It is considered by many to be the originator of the uh, Flanders Red Ale, which is uh, from the Flanders region in Belgium. I thought the history of uh, of some of the family members of this brewery uh, was pretty interesting. So evidently the Rodenbach family is very prestigious in Belgium history four of their family members founded this brewery in my opinion you know after reading through a lot of the family members these were the most important four of the family but I'll I'll name a few you won't recognize the names I'm sure but what the what they did in you know in, in life so <laughs> they say they're a family of overachievers they had soldiers uh, poets, writers, entrepreneurs, revolutionaries, and politicians. So Pedro Rodenbach took part in Napoleon's Russian campaign. And in 1830, he led the Belgian Revolution leading to Belgium's independence. So he's pretty Pedro. high up on the Yeah, Pedro. Pedro. I'm sure it's Pedro. Pedro. I don't know. It's Belgium. Rodenbach. Uh, two of the Rodenbachs were members of the, um, God, I can't read my writing now, Constituent Assembly of uh, the founders of Belgium. So when it formed their own country, when they became independent, two Rodenbachs were uh, part of the General Assembly to to form this new country. Constantine Rodenbach, Rodenbach is the author of the Belgian National Anthem. Wow. Pretty, pretty prestigious there. Mm -hmm. Eugene Rodenbach studied the vinification of beer and optimized the maturing process in the oak photos by mixing the old and new beer. So I think he is like probably the one of the best Rodenbachs. Well, he's my favorite. That there could be. Yeah. Yeah. Um, so around 1900, that's when the actual Rodenbach family phased out of owning and running the brewery. It was acquired by descendants of the family and others that who had married into the family through the years. And as Jay said, um, in 1988, they were acquired by uh, Palm Brewery. So they're a subsidiary of Palm Brewery. So technically they're macro brewery. What are some other beer lines that Palm has? Do we know? I don't know. I didn't recognize Palm. 
And I was just so mesmerized by the rodent box. I was like, yeah, well, I'm enough. satisfied. I don't need to look any more into this. Fair enough. <laughs> All right. Uh, what else we got? Is that it? Yeah, that's that's is that not I'm enough. Are you not where, entertained? No, I, yeah. I figured that's where <laughs> we're ending, but I don't want to cut you yeah. off. <laughs> you know, premature. You would love nothing more. Yeah, right. Um. All right. I don't think anybody's had this one unless you have brought home a four pack and sampled this one ahead of time. Yep. I, I saved. <clears throat> you, I'm not talking to Jay here, right? <laughs> yeah. All right. Um. Well. Amy, why don't you go first? <laughs> I uh, I like it. It is tart. It tastes. It's a great sour. And when they say sour cherries, they were not joking. You, you really pick up on that. And I, you know, whether it's a young or an aged sour, I couldn't tell. I wouldn't be able, my my palate isn't as refined, but. I'm curious to try some of the the regular Rodenbach without the sour cherry. Um, excuse me, it's <laughs> it is carbonated. I don't know. It's a hard. I'm I'm kind of on the fence about where I should um, rate this. Uh, it's um, it's almost more cherry than I want but it's still a good a good tart flavor i'm going to give it a, a seven and a half all right jay what do you think yeah i agree with you andy i think it's a really good beer um and i would be very curious to to try the the rodenbach uh classic and then the what did you call it the grand grand cru cru yeah, yeah. Those those would be cool to to have those in a comparison because definitely the cherry dominates this, um, and it's it's a you know has a great sour flavor and um, I I do love cherry but uh, that's that's a lot of cherry um, but it's 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 one I really love um, I don't think you could have more than one or two of these because it's just so so sour and acidic. Um, <laughs> Yeah, you pucker in. Yeah. Um, I, I'm I'm right there with you struggling. Uh, I'm probably gonna go seven and a half too. All right. Uh, yeah, I'm gonna stand by my earlier comment. Uh, Jerry Jolly Rancher. I mean, this is, you know, <laughs> almost. Uh, you know, the the initial thought I even had was. You know, if you ever drank Zima back in the day, you dropped a Jolly Rancher. In it. <laughs> you know, uh, wow, this would be really. I'm close, sorry, right? Rodenbach. Not no, not in a bad way. I mean, I think this is much better than a Zima with a Jolly Rancher in it. I, I mean, I'm not saying that at all. Uh, Zima was terrible, and you know, throwing a Jolly Rancher in it was just stupid. But that's where my mind went in the sense of, hey, this tastes like a cherry Jolly Rancher to me. Um, that being said, I think it's, I really like it. And yeah, you're not going to drink more than probably Maybe one of these. <laughs> yeah. I think two would be even a stretch. Um, but it is a good flavorful beer. And to the point that you both made, I think it would be really cool to have the others in the, in kind of the series, if you will, uh, to see, you know, what the base is and without the cherry. Because uh, I feel like this is a, a really good beer and it's it's really flavorful and uh, it's a fun one to have. If you come across this one, I think you should definitely pick it up. I'm going to go eight. I, I definitely understand where you guys are coming from. It's kind of on the fence in the sense that, hey, it's got a good flavor, but it's not a beer you're going to just like gravitate towards necessarily. It's like once you kind of have it, maybe you've had it and, and you can move on. But I think it's it's really tasty. Uh and yeah, I, I would I would pick it up again, you know, every once in a while just to uh just just to try it if I could, but I can't. So 
That is going to be a 7.7 for the Rodenbach Alexander. Definitely one. If you come across and you find a great Belgian beer that you need to grab, and uh, if you've had it, let us know what you think. Um, it's definitely a little bit on the sweet side, but it's, man, it's good. Um, so I think we've all enjoyed it here. And definitely this is why we do the show, so we can try new things and talk about it. With that, be sure to like, subscribe, cheers that notification bell so you can be notified of all of our videos when they come out in the future. Also, check us out on all the social medias down below. We have links for all of that. And uh, come say hey in our Hopped Up Beer Review Discord server. You know you want to come chat with the three of us. I mean, we're very chatty people. Obviously, we have our own YouTube channel. Um, lastly, if you have any interest in any Hopped Up Beer Review merch like this shirt or Jay's shirt or... Jay's glass or Jay's koozie. Uh, check the link below and you can definitely grab you some of that good stuff. Randy in the attic and Jay, I'm Ben. Cheers, mates. Cheers, mates. <laughs>